And now for the crescendo, if you will. So we've looked at a bunch of little individual pieces. Now we can look at how to compose controls on the fly. And, and this is great because, again, this really brings together graphical artists and programmers into a shared space. So, again, you are a graphical artist, or pretend you are. And you've built this um, fairly interesting shape. And now you're saying to yourself, this would be great if only he was maybe a custom user control or maybe a stylized button. Well, right now, we're nothing of the sort, right? We are a path. So look at what I can do through Blend, OK? If I were to right click on this geometry, I get a couple of really interesting options, one of which is called Make Control. So if I were to select this, watch what will happen here. I get a chance to define the name. So I'm going to call it the Odd Shape Control. And when I click OK, Blend automatically made for me a brand new user control, right? And it added it into my project. And I have my corresponding C Sharp file. So I could see here, I'm a user control. And notice how it put together the whole kit and caboodle here, right? It automatically realized that, well, you're going to have to have this storyboard as a resource. So when the mouse goes down, I can do something, maybe, right? I find that the <coughs> excuse me the path that I originally put together has been added here inside of my grid. And even better, if I were to take a peek at the original window that was making use of this, right? Let me get back to here. So here's my guy. Come to my window. Right? We can see that it added a declaration for that control. And it was ev even kind enough to add a custom CLR tag prefix. Right? So I can refer to that guy in markup, even though he's defined actually in an external part of my application. So this is all good stuff. right? Uh, that was a pretty quick operation to get an entire custom control put together. And then if I want to, I could come back to my custom control and I can fall right back to my triggers. So I could say, OK, when the control loads, start a certain storyboard. right? I could capture things like, well, maybe I want to do something special like when the uh, control has focus, right? or when it's been double clicked. Well, I can just go ahead and handle these different storyboards. right? And then by doing so, I can totally reincorporate all those visual cues. So I could just maybe add one more here. I could say when the uh, maybe when the mouse is first entering into my control, I'm going to make a new storyboard. I'll just leave it here at the default name. And maybe what I'll do is when the mouse is inside, maybe I'm just going to go ahead and scale him by uh, some factor. We maybe shrink it down. Right? So now let's go ahead and see what we got here. So I'm going to go into my shape now. And see how it just got smaller? If I were to add in another effect, such as uh, when the mouse exits, well then I could go ahead and make it expand back to that original size. So we're getting some pretty great functionality here all through this tool. right? So basically, Blend went ahead and recorded that storyboard and then connected it to the mouse entering routed event. Now there's a similar operation you can do as well. You know, I just walked through this idea here about making a new control. Sometimes you don't want to get a brand new control. You just want to get a stylization. So look at, uh, look at what I can do here. Let's go back to my main window. And let's do this. Let's put on a new shape. All right, so here's a rectangle. And I'll just change the fill properties. We can kind of see something here. So imagine that we, we like this guy. We want him to become a button. Right? Well, this is even a better example. Let me show you this here. You know, let's look at 
something a little more exotic. I got some odd geometry. I want this guy to become a button. Well, what I can do is I can go ahead and just uh, right click on him, or I should say select him, come to my tools area, right? Oop, let me select my actual path, come to my tools area, and now I can go ahead and make a button. Now, this is not going to actually make a class which subclasses the button base class. What it's going to do instead is it's going to make a style, right? a custom style. And it's going to put it inside of a resource. So I'll call it my button. And I'll just keep them here in the app or in the uh, the window. So what I see happened is I have a brand new button, which is taking on this style that I just got defined here as a new resource. And again, I could go back to that triggers editor and start to play around with all my triggers. So that's a little bit different of an operation than what we do when we make a brand new user control where we really get a strongly typed class. This will just basically have a button with a custom style. So here in your uh, slides, we're just kind of walking through the same example. You know, this kind of is a, a perfect example of doing something really quickly that other toolkits would take a long time to do. You know, how many times have you had to have a real button that just has some custom shape? I mean, my goodness, I remember doing similar things in MFC, and it was brutal. It was just absolutely brutal. I was writing code out of my ears. But here, I could just draw a circle in Blend and automatically convert it into a stylized button. Right? And then after that point, as I mentioned, I could then edit my template and uh, start to incorporate all my triggers. So I've already kind of done this demo already, so I'm not going to do that all over again. The final thing that I really want to talk about here, though, is just a really quick preview, and the operative sentence or the op operative segment there is really quick. Just talk about what's coming down the road. Blend 3.0 adds in a couple of things that I think we're all going to love. The biggest thing is the, um, the evil yellow double clicking situation is gone. You just click once in your object and timeline area, and whatever you clicked is now the thing that will receive all the focus. So that's much, much simpler. Even more cool, we now have a built-in code editor. So let me just fire up Blend 3 here. And by the way, this is available through a CTP. So if you wanted to, you could download this um, technology preview today from the silverlight.net website is where I got mine. 